Good morning, Kingdom Saints, subscribers, viewers. I want to start our day off with a discussion. The discussion is why is it it's so important to come to Jesus? We live in a world right now that's filled with evil. It's wicked. Believe that. It's wicked. It's filled with hate. It's a dark world we live in, you know what I'm saying? So, there's a lot of things happening right now that's already been prophesied to us by Christ the King. It's in Revelations. Wars and rumors of wars, pestilences, famines, brother against brother, sister against sister, father against son. It's all happening right now. This world is in total disarray, which is why we must come to the realization that we need Jesus right now. We need Jesus in our lives. You know what I'm saying? You might not think you need Jesus. You might think you got it made right now. You got a nice job. You got a nice car. You got a nice house. You got a husband and a wife that you love. You know what I'm saying? whatever your case may be, male or female, and that uh, you don't need anything. You got everything you have in this world. But see, that's just it. Bottom line, this world. Are you thinking about the next world? Or do you think that when you die, that's it? Poof. There's nothing else. Well, let me tell you, there is something else. There's life. There's death and then there's eternal life and then there's eternal death okay life as we know it right now that we're living and then death which is natural everybody's going to die for God said it is appointed once for man to die and then the judgment so we have life then we die some die young, some die in the middle of the, their life, and some die of old age, some die of natural causes, some die in accidents, some die in shootings, some die, but we all die, we're all going to die, that's a given fact, that's a natural fact, and after death, depending on your, what path you took in your life, whether you follow Jesus, or whether you follow the darkness, Scripture says, wide is the gate to the world, but narrow is the gate to heaven. So if you took the wide gate, your destination is already guaranteed upon death. You can have eternal torment with Satan and the lake of fire. But if you took the narrow road, going to spend an eternity with Jesus. And that's a decision you have to make. Not next week. Not tomorrow. Today, right now, at this minute. At this minute. Because look, consider, consider eternal life with Jesus as something you cherish, something you want, but most of all, something you need. Let's compare it to you working, and you working hard and hard, and you because you want that pay pay grade, you want that raise, you want to someday be the CEO of your company. You start from scratch. You work your way up, and you're happy with your earnings. You got a paycheck coming. You can go out and buy stuff. You can go shopping. You can take the wife out for a manicure, get her hair done, you know, because ain't no woman going to be with you if you ain't got no money. Am I right about another plane? <laughs> <laughs> but that, that is the philosophy of most women in the world, of the world. You know, so if you ain't got no money, I don't want them. If you ain't got a car, I ain't, I ain't going to give them the time of day. You know, most women don't even look at you 
if you're not dressed right or if you don't have a nice fancy car, you had a big bank account. You don't need all of that. Because all of the things that you had that you're striving for, your your car, your bank account, your house, your livelihood, this vessel, your vessel, your body, your life, everything is temporary. But Jesus is permanent. So everything that you're doing and you're striving for this child, you're going to get more bucks you want to you want to raise you should be thinking that same way and acting that same way about jesus about your salvation about your salvation because your salvation is more important than everything 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 you in this world is is not going to be here forever but jesus is going to be here forever he's going to be waiting for you waiting for you on judgment day. You know, Scripture says, many will be running to and fro and hiding in the caves. There will be crying and gnashing of teeth. You know what that means? Crying and running, running from the Lord because they're contemptuous. They lived in rebellion and they're running. They're running. The darkness can't stand in the light. That's why they're running. They can't stand in the light. They've been contemptuous all their lives. They've been rebellious. They've been disobedient. They're crying because they already know their destination. They already know what Jesus is going to say to them. And there's gnashing of teeth. You know, when I was a, a, a teen coming up, and people used to mess with me. They used to mess with me. I just gnash my teeth. See? I just gnash my teeth. Because I'm holding in the desire to pow. I'm gnashing my that's a sign of that's a sign of contempt. You know what I'm saying? When they're gnashing their teeth. There's gonna be many people. Millions, millions are gonna be crying, running to and fro and gnashing their teeth because they were disobedient. And when Jesus comes, Jesus is what, and we all have to be judged. The just and the wicked, the good and the bad, the Christian and the sinner were all going to be judged. Because even Christians, so-called Christians, some are going to hell as well. Just because you call yourself a Christian doesn't mean you're saved. Doesn't mean you're saved because there's many Christians that call themselves Christians, but they're sinning. They're living in sin every day. They don't follow the word. They don't do what Jesus did. You know what I'm saying? They don't live like Jesus lived. They don't have the light of Jesus inside of them. But yet they go to church on Sunday. Oh, I'm saved. I'm good. I'm good. But Monday they're out to smoking that weed or, or, or going to the clubs, drinking, getting drunk, you know, acting like they, they, they're they saved, but they're not. They're not. Just because you go to church doesn't mean you're saved does not mean you're saved. You can go to church. I don't care if you go to church every day of the week. Just because you go to church does not mean you're saved. Going to church doesn't is not a requirement to, for salvation. It's not. It's not a requirement. That's not what uh, going to church is for. Going to church is for fellowshipping. You know, like, uh, say you're an alcoholic and you just, you're just getting over alcoholism. You're going to AA meetings once a week because if you don't go to your meetings, you're going to slip out. You're going to slip off, I mean. You're going to fall off the, as they say, fall off the wagon. 
You got them. You got a fellowship with with your fellow AA mates because that's what's keep you going. They're going to help you to get stronger and overcome your addiction. Well, that's what fellowshipping is for. Fellowshipping is um, a congregation, a meeting of all the saints, of all the people who believe in Christ. We just get together and we have. Not, we not only go to church, we have fun, we have activities, we do things together, we go to restaurants, we have we have activities at the church, we have activities away from the church, you know what I'm saying? We have outreaches, we have get-togethers, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not about just going to church and sitting in a church every day, every Sunday, you know what I'm saying? We, we all go out and do things, we follow, so we're like a big... Kingdom family, you know what I'm saying? That's what going to church is for. And and hearing the word of God and praising the Lord. Praising the Lord and singing and singing the, and giving him praises, you know what I'm saying? But that doesn't mean you have to go to church to be saved. You don't have to go to church to be saved. You're saved because you believe and you confess and you repent. And you act on your belief. Because a lot of people believe. Even the demons believe, but and they shake and tremble at their name, Jesus. They shake and tremble in fear. They believe. But you got to act on your belief. Got to act on your belief. So it's like when you're walking here, that's why you got to come to Jesus. Because he's the, he's the ultimate CEO. You know what I'm saying? So it's not about your job. It's not about that nice car you got. I mean, that doesn't mean you can't have those things. You can be, you can be a, a disciple of Christ and still have a nice house, still have a nice car, have a loving husband or a loving wife. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful kids, and as they say, a house with a white picket fence. You can have all of those things and God will add to you because scripture says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and the rest will be added to you. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So you got to place an importance on what's important to you in this world or what's important for you for the next world, your final destination. There's life here on earth, then there's heaven, then there's hell. You have to decide for yourself today which way you're going to go. You're living your life and not knowing Jesus. Darkness is following you all around. Darkness is following you because the Satan walks around like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. The, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. All the devil can do is tear up your flesh and send you to the abyss with him. Actually, he's not going to send you to the abyss. God is going to send you to the abyss. But all he can do is tear up your flesh. He can't touch your soul. So don't believe none of that stuff you read about or see in the tabloids or see on the media. About, I sold my soul to the devil. Blah humbug. You can't sell something that God already gave you. All souls belong to me, say it, the Lord God Almighty. Your soul belongs to God. From dust you came, to dust you shall return. But your soul belongs to him. Your soul goes back to him. And when that time comes, when Jesus comes for his church, for his bride, This is what you're going to hear if you don't know Jesus, if you don't follow Jesus, if you live the life of wickedness. This is what you're going to hear. Depart from me. I never knew you, you workers of iniquity. And believe me, my brother, my sister, 
those are the worst words you want to hear. That's what's going to be the worst day of your life. Even your afterlife is going to be the worst day for you because you already know where you're going down there. And you will be separated from God. Hmm. Separated from God. You love your father, right? You love your father. When you was a kid, you loved your father. Your father was your provider. He provided you with shelter, with food, with clothes. Gave you an allowance. Well, some of us got an allowance. I didn't get one. Because I grew up without a father. I grew up without a mother. I was raised on the streets. I had to find my own way. And I went through 48 years of despair. I went through 48 years of pain and suffering. I went through 48 years of not knowing Jesus. I almost died six times. Died six times. I lived a life of sin. Jesus saved me from those six death attempts. People tried to kill me. I tried to commit suicide twice. Didn't work. You know what I'm saying? I came to the end of myself. But you know what? Jesus snatched me from that evil grasp of Satan, opened my eyes and showed me the mistake. Things I was making. And he can do the same for you. He can do the same for you. So don't wait until judgment day. Because it's going to be too late. You got to make a decision right now. I'm going to walk in darkness. Or I'm going to have the eternal light of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? Make a decision because... I'm going to let y'all know right now. We ain't got that much time left, people. You know what I'm saying? You got to place an importance on, on what is important to you. This temporary life on this temporary planet or a permanent eternal vacation. <laughs> Oh, with Jesus the King, and he'll give you eternal life and make you white as snow. And you'll be perfected. You'll be perfect. When Jesus comes, you'll be made perfect. We'll have a complete, perfect being with him, existence with him in heaven. You know what I'm saying? So... It's not about what you want in this world, and it's not even about this world. It's about Jesus, and it's about him, because he's permanent. This world is not. You know what I'm saying? Revelation says that he will make the land desolate. And when he comes... God's wrath will fall upon all the nations, which means the whole world, all the nations, all the waters, all the seas. So make your decision today, people, and I implore you, come to Jesus, because Jesus is waiting for you to come to him, just like he waited for me. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. I'm not saying that I didn't sin, and I'm not saying that I still don't sin, but I'm covered by the blood of the Most High God. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus, amen? I'm covered by the blood because I don't intentionally sin. I don't go out in the world every day and just tell myself, you know, you act like oh, I'm going to uh, uh, doubt and sin, intentional sin. No, because it's not about me anymore. I don't have that in me anymore. Jesus removed it. It's all about what I can do for the kingdom of God, what I can do for Jesus, what I can do for people on the streets. You know what I'm saying? My brothers, my sisters that need to hear the word. I go out and I evangelize and I, 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 I uh, reach out to them 
and let them do the stuff. Just like I'm reaching out to you right now. I reach out to them on the streets, on the corners, wherever I am. In Washington, Maryland, or Virginia. D.C., Maryland, or Virginia. So it don't matter. It don't matter. And the only reason I don't go to other countries is because financial, but that doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. Because there's many evangelists all around the world doing what I do here in D.C., Maryland, and Virginia. So, uh, the uh, scripture says, when the gospel has been preached to all nations, the Holy Spirit will depart from this earth and there will be no more grace for you. If you don't know Jesus, you're not going to be able to have grace. You know what that means? The wrath of God is coming. You know, that's the only reason God's wrath hasn't come down on us yet. And Jesus hasn't appeared to us yet. It's because grace, God's grace, we are under his grace. And once the Holy Spirit leaves the earth after the gospel has been preached to all the nations and everything in Revelations has been prophesied, has come to completion, when the world is evangelized and the church is complete, Jesus is going to come. And it's him that we shall meet. Amen. So, yes, people, come to Jesus today. Make a decision today. Make a decision today. Put it on your to-do list for today. You know? After you get off work. Go see Jesus. Go get baptized at your local church. You know what I'm saying? Get baptized, walk in the Spirit. And you're going to see how dramatically and joyfully your life will change. Your life will change. And you're going to be like, why didn't I do this before? Why didn't I do this before? I feel so peaceful. I feel so serene. I feel so much joy. You know why? Because... That's Jesus inside of you giving me you all that all those things. Because everything that's good comes from Jesus. Everything that's good comes from Jesus. And when you walk with him every day, you can feel it. You're just a whole new, because Chris Scripture says you are a new creation. You are a new creation so then my uh, brothers and sisters I hope this message hits somebody I hope it hits somebody and don't forget to subscribe don't forget to subscribe love you all